So, you're looking for a way to start using uh, Sim AI here. Well, the thing with Sim AI is you can immediately start using it via their website, which is sim.ai. Now, in their official website, there are a few things that we need to understand. Now, typically, if you use or start using Sim AI, you could use it for free, which in this case, you could you could uh, you could basically get the community plan here, which is free. But there are some restrictions, like for example, a ten dollar usage limit here, public te uh, template access, community support, limited log retention, and a CLI and SDK access. But if you want to get more out of the platform, well, you may need to get a plan, like uh, for example, the pro plan here, the team plan, or even the enterprise plan. So, in this case, how do we start using it? Now, immediately when you go to the website, you have the option to already interact with their AI. Now, in here, you can even ask the AI or ask Sam here to build an agent to basically read emails or read certain processes. So, for example, I'm going to ask here, help me build a email reader that will create an Excel sheet. And just press enter. Now, in order for you to start you are using this, you want to go and just create your account. Now, let's go and click on Google here and just create our account. And once you've created your account here, this is, is inside the AI or the app itself. Now, at the right side, this is where you, you should be able to uh, basically start asking the AI to build something for you. Let's go and just send this one real quickly. Now, it's going to show you your copilot here. So just wait for a while here. It's going to start or start the planning process. Now, by the way, there are different segments that you can access in here. So copilot is the AI. Console here if you want to see the entries for your console. Now the chat section if you want to uh, basically uh, interact. And also you have your variables section or tab here which should allow you to start adding or managing your variables. Now if you want to add like for example, a plain number, a number, or a plain number or boolean or object array depends on what type of variable you are, are you actually are looking for. Now by the way, if you don't know what a variable is, now think of them as like storages for different information that you want to store. Now depending on what you are planning to do, you may need to build or create your own variable. As you can see, Copilot or the AI itself or Sam is still building our workflow here. So it might take a while. But as you can see, we could basically see how things are moving along. Now, by default, you already have your hand tool here that you could move around, as you can see right now. Now, from here, you, sh you should have the option here that basically allows you to view the original or even uh, reject the changes or accept the changes. Now, let's go and click on accept. Now, once you've done that, as you can see, it's still building at the right side here. So just wait for a while here. So it's going to verify the workflow structure as well. But while it's still uh, building here, you can go and just click on the appropriate uh, work uh, segments here, or in this case, blocks that we have. So let's go and click on configure trigger. Now in here, this is where you should be able to start adding a certain information. Like for example, what's the label uh, filter behavior here? Now, what's the credential? So you could go and just log in into your Google account and also set up instructions here and also the actual uh, payload example here. Now, if you want to edit the actual email extractor here, you could go ahead and basically click on it. So you could go and click on switch to advanced mode if you want to see the advanced version of this one. But in here, you should be able to see the user prompt, system prompt here, and a lot more. By the way, you could go and rename this specific block here if you want. Now, in here you have your Google Sheets, which should allow you to start managing how it actually interacts. So, for example, what's the operation? Append data. And what's the Google account? So, you could go and just connect your Google account. Like, it also like a sheet from that Google account. And also, what's the range of uh, where you want to add your data? And also, what's the value here? The value input options and insert data options. Now, obviously, there are a lot of uh, things that you could do in here. Depending on what blocks are added or what blocks you're using, the options that you can change uh, may differ. Now, at the dev side, this is where you could basically see your blocks. But with every build or workflow that you're doing, everything starts with the triggers. So you want to click on triggers here at the left side. And basically, this is how you add your trigger. Now, trigger from the name itself triggers the whole process. Now, blocks here are going to be the processes that comes after the trigger. So that's, uh, generally speaking, how the workflow or workflow are, uh, are usually structured. So, yeah. So if you want to test your uh, build here or workflow, you can go and click on uh, run at the top right. Now, if you want to duplicate the workflow, you can go and duplicate this one. Now, if you want to start debugging and see what went wrong later on, obviously there are a lot of things that you could do in here, but basically those are the basics. And that's about it. Hopefully this video was able to help you like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.